Hi, welcome to Farm Coast Editorial. Today I'm going to give you a little rundown of what we have planned for our 2021 garden and show you the varieties and show you what they look like now. Um, so I am reading off of my computer here. Um, I use a Google spreadsheet with, which has just some very small information about what I've sown, just so I can sort of get a color feel for things and a little bit of a planning device for getting the amount of seed starting stuff and how much I'm starting on everything out and there. Um, so I really write down the name. I paste in a photo of that variety, um, the start date. So it turns, it starts from, you know, 12 weeks out to April 1st to being, uh, which is our last frost date, um, to being um, the exact date once I've sown it. Um, and then how many I'm planning on starting, if there's any notes associated with it, um, whether I'm going to, if there's a plan for the location, which not everything has a plan. Um, and then the place that I purchase it so I can purchase it again. And sometimes it has a link if I remember to add in a link. So, um, I'm going to walk you through some of those things and give you a little bit of a snapshot of what everything looks like. So first off we have, um, the um, early starts, um, I started a, um, so everything I did in a 12, little 12 packs, so there's either like six or 12 starts, sections of things, and then you see, I went to just what from what germinated from there. Um, so I did a little pack of eucalyptus. I did um, baby blue and silver drop. Um, I'd love to get to the point where I really had a little patch of, um, eucalyptus um, if I was living someplace temperate enough to keep it. But I think that in the future, the chances that I'll probably be someplace less temperate than Tennessee. Currently also we are planting some spring things in containers here for the balcony. And then we're also planting um, the garden at my boyfriend's house where I'll be moving in this come, come this June. So we have, we are, I have installed one out of the three four by eight raised beds and I get uh, compost next week. Soil, technically, it's a soil compost raised bed mix that's getting delivered next week. So I have to finish those this week and get them all ready to go. Um, and so that'll get us on schedule for like an early April start for some things in the garden and sort of obviously keeping some things that are a little more tender and want warmer. Um, a little later on. So we have the three raised beds, plus the hope is a good amount of containers and fun things that are uh, not necessarily huge investment pieces, but really making where we're living for the next future really great there. The um, other location there is a park shade garden, and that is the other established location to plant in um, that um, is about three feet in depth and then um, has a couple of things, has an arborvitae, has had some Nero growing it, growing in it in the in the past, but needs some good amending of soil and some just some some tender loving care um, over the next season. So that is our project together and the raised beds are probably a little bit more of my project. Um, so we have eucalyptus. We also started some bee balm. I started some things that would potentially could be good in clay if we wanted to put think, uh, put together a small area where we're planting into the ground. We could start some things that are, are good in clay. Natives are obviously going to be better for that type of situation. Bee balm is one of those. This one's an annual bee balm. It's a lemon mint um, bee balm. Um, it should be kind of fun to have for potentially for cut flowers as well. Um, I started some mountain mint. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, it doesn't look like that. Um, so it actually looks like the Virginiana variety, I believe it is. But basically mountain mint is a native uh, in that same Menard mint family, native plant family. And I believe there's a couple of varieties and this seed packet came from um, 
Europe from oh from Ireland from Cedaholic, and I don't think this is the correct variety that it's labeled. I did start two of these. We'll see how it goes, but I'm pretty sure that it's not the same variety that I was hoping for. I was really hoping for something that looked like um, spotted bee balm, since I couldn't get my hands on that. I have been looking for years. Um, I also have sea holly, which is a beautiful thistle-like looking plant that. Um, kind of looks like wilted lettuce and then this giant blue thistle that's like this color, which climbs out of the top of it. Um, I have a couple of those, I think I have four seedlings. Um, and then I also have a couple of Palmer's Penstemon. Now, Palmer's really should be like direct seeded in the fall, but obviously I didn't know where we were going to be. And so I did a little winter sowing on some of these things. That's one of them. Um, they're pretty far behind seedling wise, so I don't know if I'll get these, but they're kind of this kind of interesting, um, they have that kind of uh, almost orchidy style uh, uh, flower shape. Um, and they're really tall spikes and do well in really dry clay soil. So that's why I chose that one. Um, I also started Larkspur, but I killed those, I think. Um, that they just really didn't like the cold one night, which is funny because they were, I think they're just too young to be out in the cold. Um, and I thought they would be fine to be in the cold frame. Uh, they weren't super healthy seedlings to start with, so I wasn't super concerned. Um, just didn't, they just didn't germinate very well. Um, and then I have a lot of foxgloves. So I started 24 foxgloves. I have about 20 really good looking starts on those. My I did start them early enough that I was hoping that I could get some that bloomed this year. We'll see if that happens. My guess is that some of them might and some of them will not. Um, but loving to put those in a part shade garden. Um, these are the uh, apricot fairy queen. They start with a, like a light pink and they come down to like a white color on the bottom of the stalk. Um, and they, these are one of the few uh, flowers that are really striking that do well in shade. So that's why we chose them. Um, I couldn't find any for sale. Obviously buying seeds in 2021 was difficult. This year was difficult in 2020. I didn't find any of the, that any varieties that claimed they were uh, annual foxgloves, um, that they were not biennials. And so the only chance was really to start them early and hope that you get a first year bloom. Um, and then two snapdragons, a dark purple, which was sent as a gift, and apricot. Um, I have more experience with the Madame Butterfly variety of snapdragons, but these are also cutting snapdragons, not bedding, um, which you might see at the garden place. So these are gonna create long stems you can cut um, for flowers, and I just adore how they look in flower arrangements. Um, and then we have some Black Eyed Susan in the Chim Chimery variety. I'm not a huge yellow, bright yellow fan. Um, I like soft yellows, as you'll see throughout this. Um, this is like one random that I added in there that I thought might be fun. I really would have liked to start like Cherry Brandy Rebecca or something, Sahara um, Echinacea. Um, but uh, this is what I could get my hands on this year. Since I did not um, try and jump into the first part of the floret sale this year. I just got the second um, load of a seed they added to their site. Um, so I added these, I think they'll be fun. Um, and, and then I also started a, quite a few summer berry yarrow. So I've grown these before and put them in my mother's garden. Um, I don't know if they'll survive for new fencing location, but we'll find out. Um, but these are, this is a really lovely uh, mix of yarrow. Um, and I like them because it's kind of really soft and it looks so good in floral arrangements and they fill in really well in the summer area, uh, in a full sun area, excuse me, um, for your garden. Next one I did was an Acacia mix. This is from Renee's garden and they are beautiful. They have a really good variety of colors as well as like a peachy, purple, white, yellow, orangey, kind of lovely mix. Um, best color mix that I'd seen. We'll see what if I get that color mix on those echinaceas. And they are perennial and they're good in clay. Um, then I started some, I have some Feverfew. This is the double kind. Um, I 
um, have been starting to use Fever Few for headaches, and I love it. Um, so does my boyfriend. Um, so maybe we'll get, even get brave enough to start to make our own tincture. He's a little bit more brave when it comes to that than I am. I'll grow it for sure, and then we can go from there. Um, but I kind of think of Fever Few as like a easier um, cut flower or like bedding version of like a chamomile, like a tiny daisy. Um, and I love this kind of fluffier variety. Um, then I have China Aster Gumf and Gumfrina from Johnny Seeds. China Aster, I did the pink, and Gumfrina, I did the double rose, or what it's called. Um, and um, those are um, going to be fun. They both kind of do better at the end of the summer, so it's kind of nice to have those fill in. And the Gumfrina dries really beautifully. Um, Malope is a new one to me that I actually started last year and I didn't get to see. And so I had some leftover seed and started those. They're supposed to be an earlier, um, kind of hibiscus looking, um, flower. I'm very excited to see what those end up looking like. Um, and these are queen pink is the variety color. Um, I've seen some yellow ones of these, which I'd be really interested in trying one year. For straw flowers, I used Save Seed, the apricot, and the um, container variety from Renee's Garden. Um, both me and my boyfriend love straw flowers. I keep dried straw flowers here in the apartment. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, next up, we have Scabiosa, double rose pink. We'll see how these are. I've used them in um, shade part shade gardens before, and I absolutely loved it. So that's the location for the bees, I think. Um, they just, I found they looked um, just as nice in a part shade. They kind of created these lovely longer stems and they weren't necessarily for cut gardens um, where we had placed them in my mother's um, back patio area, but they just were perfect um, with the landscape. And so that is where I hope to put them again this year in a part shade area. Then I have nigella, which has germinated horribly. I think I'm gonna to need to do some work in looking into nigella and how to be better be a better plant mom to nigella. I have one seedling. I have started 12 cells. Don't know what I did wrong. Um, there's that. Um, and then I have two packets of dahlia seeds. So obviously, if you want a certain variety of dahlia, you have to buy a tuber. You can grow your tuber and you hope that the next year you get more dahlia tubers out of it. In this case, I have two seed mixes. I have Florette Bee's Friend, which is going to be more um, of an open flower shape. Um, and then I also have Decorative Giants, which are not quite the dinner plate size, but more along the size, and they are of different colors of the decorative giant variety. Um, so those all get full, um, full styles, not the single styles, um, but um, I don't know what colors those will be. The mix and the color off from Cetaholic on those, which they're no longer available on there, it looks like, um, but uh, we'll see what those come out to be. So I have quite a few of each of those, um, and we'll see where I can fit them in or give them away to friends. Um, I have some Nicotiana, which I've never been successful with. This is Tobacco World. When we sometimes go to one of our favorite back walk spots, we drive by these beautiful tobacco fields. I just think that those giant leaves are gorgeous. Um, and so I've never been successful growing Nicotiana. I'm not sure. I think it's probably because I've never had like a true full sun garden where I've placed them. So we'll see if these even get a spot or if they do very well. It's not in my track record to do well for these. And then I have some Supercrest and some Pink Flamingo Solosha. Supercrest um, is a old seed that I have and they germinate very well. And the Pink Flamingo is saved seed. Solosha is such an easy plant to save seed from. Um, they just kind of like sprinkle out of their little crest. crest. It's just quite awesome. Um, so I love those in late summer as well. And so they're really fun to have. Um, and then I have quite a few Cosmos. I have four colors this year. Uh, I've got Psyche White. I've got a Cosmo mix um, that are uh, more like bicolor. Um, I've got Xanthos, which is a light butter yellow, and Apricot Lemonade, which is a super light apricot -y pink color with a tin, tiny bit of yellow in there. 
Um, very excited about those. Um, I also have a couple of nasturtium varieties. Um, I have the Aloha mix, the um, butter yellow and something else. Um, all, and the other one is just yellow with a little bit of pink coming out of the center. Um, really like them kind of coming over beds. So I like to put them in the corners of beds um, and they are good aphid attractors. Um, I have two varieties of phlox, whipped cream and the caramel brulee, I think it's called. Something along like that, Some ca something caramel. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, they, these are beautiful. Um, I've never grown annual phlox. I grew up with phlox in the garden um, from my mother um, every year. Those were just like garden phlox. I don't know what you call them. Um, but um, these are annual phlox. We'll see how that goes. I'm not having super great um, germination. I think I have four out of 24 so far. So we're, we'll see how those goes. Those are some of the last to get um, a spot here to grow on. And then I have so many zinnias. And weirdly enough, I've had some issues with direct seeding zinnias in the past. And there's been tons of reasons why, like you can name a reason and we've probably had that reason happen to us from being washed away to being a drought to being a no water spring where we weren't allowed to water anything in the garden. And I was bringing gallons of water to save my seedlings from my apartment in the county next door to the garden space at my parents' house since they didn't have a well. Um, then a couple of days, a couple of weeks later, then our neighbors gave us their hosts, their wells. Thank goodness. Um, but the stuff that we had seeded before the pipe broke in our town um, didn't do super well. Um, but we have, I'm starting them all inside, which I know is weird, but I have Thumbelina for containers. I have Green Endy, Zinderella in peach. I usually like the lilac, but I couldn't get those this year. And then there's Coral, Apricot Blush, Queen Lime Red, um, Queen Lime Orange, and um, Little Flower Girl Mix. And so I've grown, I think all of these, except for maybe, Technically, I don't think I've grown apricot blush before. Um, and then the little flower girl mix from Florette, which is a new variety from them. It's like a light lilac color. Um, obviously, I like orangey apricot tones, coral tones when it comes to these things. There's not a lot of like purple in there. Um, I have some hygacinth, hygacinth bean, which has not been started yet and will get started um, just as like putting them into the container, just like direct seeding them. They're just such a lovely plant to put into containers and they can climb up a really lovely sort of obelisk. Um, so I plan to do that this year. Um, and they're really easy to save seed on too. Um, the seed I have I actually collected on one of my first dates with uh, Mitchell when we went walking in East Nashville. We just took some seed. Um, I also have quite a few varieties of poppies, all purchased from Cedaholic. That's where you want to buy your poppies, by the way. End of conversation. The value that you get for your money is better. And while they don't have things like the, um, uh, the gray ones, the, mm, the dark gray ones, which I actually have a packet of those, they do have all of the bread seed. They have the Kiln Scott Giants. They have the um, beautiful silk um, um, California poppies. And I'm doing a couple of different trial things with them. I direct seed quite a few here in the garden. Doing good. Um, as well as trying some um, in little seed packets. I can kind of just like dip, dip them into locations um, so they're, they don't hopefully feel like they're being transplanted too badly. Um, and we'll see how those go. I've never had super success with poppies, but since we had a very, I live in a temperate place here, I was able to start some direct in the winter, which I'm super excited about. Um, other things that we have this, this year that I'm not sure I'm going to be putting out include um, my um, sunflower collection, which I have quite a few, um, just not the right place and location, but I have Ruby Eclipse. I have a beautiful mix that has like kind of fluffy different red ones as well. Um, as well as Pro Cut Light White, which I adore. Um, and then I have 
um, some sweet peas. So we have two varieties of sweet peas. If you've seen the video, they have the balcony mix, which are doing good. And then I also have the um, heirloom collection of um, Spencer. They're all light pinks and whites. Um, and those are doing really good in the container as well as the ones I started in the gallon buckets um, are put directly into gallon buckets after germination that I might just throw into um, some place with a trellis on in the ground as well. Um, and then um, I also have fruit and veggie. So mostly peppers, almost exclusively peppers. I do have some tomatillos um, and you do need to have more than one tomatillo in order for it to have cross pollination. So I started four. I don't know if I will plant all four or if I will do two or three really good ones. You just can't lose um, a seedling and have the pollination to actually create fruit. Um, so you do need to like make sure you start enough that you have, you end up with two good plants minimum. Um, and then we have tons and tons of peppers. I think I have eight to 10 varieties of peppers, um, hot to not, um, habanero to cayenne to Thai hot to um, padron peppers instead of shishito this year, to ajvarsky, which is our sweet pepper. Um, lots and lots of hot peppers though as a main source for fun this summer. And a lot of those will go in containers and some in the beds. And then I have a couple of um, eggplants. Um, my favorite are the Rosa Bianca. Um, they're just this beautiful round, light pinky colored ones and they just make so, uh, so beautiful, so lovely to eat. Um, and they have some black beauties as well. I have two types of strawberries growing in the garden outside. Um, the pineapple um, alpine berries have not been planted yet, but the, um, excuse me, the mignonette alpine have been planted and they are doing really good. They are in the window boxes out there. Um, we'll go from there and see what happens. Um, new garden beds, new part shade garden. Some things have to move across town halfway through the year, um, at the beginning of the growing season. Let's hope they're doing well. Everything is, um, half of everything is outside getting hardening off already or in the cold frame getting ready. Um, and then half of everything is under the light still. And they're just like young early plants that'll have a probably a better start than getting directly into the garden, um, based off of my experience with direct seed. So, um, for some things like Cosmos and zinnias, which sometimes are supposed to be easy direct seed, but I just haven't had the right conditions to make that easy. Um, so hoping for the best this year and I can't wait to bring you along the way.